Well, Nick, it's been a long day of awesome Halo Wars 2 gameplay, some incredible teams coming out, and it's all come down to this, the BTC Halo Wars 2 2v2 Grand Finals. Now, Nicholas, we have some incredible players taking part in this match. Right now, if I stand corrected, according to the leaderboards, we have the number one, number three, number four, and number 11 player in the world for Halo Wars 2 2v2s participating in this match. Nick, what do you have to say? It's incredible that we could be so lucky enough to host a tournament where these top tier players wanted to come in and hopefully spread the word that we need a Halo Championship Series. We need a Halo Wars 2 uh, Championship Series hosted by 343. We need to drive this community forward. It's clear that a lot of people love competitive Halo Wars 2, and we hope that we can be a little beacon of light uh, showing off the potential for it. Exactly that. I agree with you more than anything else, Nick. That was the whole reason for this whole tournament, aside from the fact to have an incredible time playing competitively against each other in this in this series, in the tournament, and every single thing has come together and turned out so wonderfully and has led up to this moment. I think this is a perfect example of how exciting Halo Wars 2 can truly be. Now with all the patches and the involvement from 343 and Creative Assembly, everything is getting much better in terms of balance, in terms of skill. In terms of, say, strategy, so many different options are available to each player now. And to have the opportunity to record that and show it to the world just how exciting it truly can be is nonetheless an honor. And we couldn't have done this again, uh, just a few shout outs, we couldn't have done this again without everyone who views our YouTube channel. We appreciate the support that you give, the comments you leave. It truly does inspire us to make tournaments like these and already we've already started planning for tournaments in the future. Uh, so again couldn't do it without you guys we thank you so much for the support also to our two anonymous donors thank you again so much for your generosity uh it's it's little generous uh things like that that again fuel us to keep going also couldn't have done it without every single person who participated in this tournament it's been fantastic to watch I couldn't be happier with the with the players that we have had in here and everyone when we've chatted with them throughout the throughout our chat throughout uh, talking to them in a party and game they've been fantastic to to have in the community and I, I couldn't be happier with the people who have participated in this tournament and last but not least thank you again to the Halo Wars Reddit thank you for the support thank you for letting us post on uh, on your threads couldn't have done this without you guys as well and the support uh for the past few months so again thank you to every single person who has influenced us or helped us in any way possible that's right you guys are the people who make btc just as exciting and fun and to and to, to basically run this channel just like we have done you know it's 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 all it's all provided to us from you guys so thank you so much for everything now without further ado sappy sob story out of the way Nicholas Manzioni, we have some of the best players in Halo Wars 2 currently coming out to participate in this match. Now, let's take a look firstly at Andrew is Toxic. Tell me about those players and what you're excited for. So, I believe these two on the global leaderboards are number one and number three in 2v2. I think you said something like 39-0. and 0. That's right. C. Mitch is currently 37-0 and 0 on the leaderboard. At the time of this tournament, he has not dropped a single game in 2v2s yet. I believe he's the only person in the top 100 to not drop a single game. So this guy is one of the best players, if not the one, yeah, I'd say, I'd say easily one of the best players in the world at Halo Wars 2. And it transitioned so easily into this tournament. He is playing against, uh, what is uh, Good Shit Buck Snort's uh, two players ranked? Exactly that. Insane Just as Natronics. Insane shows up, my homie right here. Insane is number four overall on the leaderboards. I believe he has uh, 86 games played or something absolutely ridiculous like that in less than 20 losses. That goes for his teammate as well, Natronics. Both of these guys are extremely good, and their record just says it for itself. Say All they do is they lose one game every four matches played, and I'm sure they're on some kind of win streak because they are currently one of the highest ranked players in the world. And of course, Nick, tell me a little bit more. So, so what we saw out of out of C. Mitch and Udpu, okay? Those guys, these guys are absolutely crazy. They just invent the meta as they play game. It's insane. Uh, what we were seeing was a Jackrabbit opener from Mitch in in the first two games we witnessed, and then what we saw from Udpu is a Sentinel opener 
into siege vehicles and tanks, or yeah, into Kodiaks, into turrets, whatever. And then he upgraded the Siege Sentinel ability for Anders, so every single time a Siege shell hit the ground from one of those units or turrets, two Sentinels would show up, and it would be like an arc defense every engagement. It is absolutely insane. Nick, what do you expect to see out of them in this series? Now, again, good shit Buckstar has already played Andrew is toxic. They kind of have an idea on what these strategies, what strategies C Mitch might hold. So we might not see that strategy unless they, maybe they try to switch it up a little bit. But I'm more curious on Insane's side. How are they going to counter this rush? They either have to do one of two things. They have to play for the late game or they have to do so well on their initial rush that they take out expansions, they capture power nodes, and then they can eat push up with counter units very quickly in the middle of the game uh if i think if this goes late game i think it's all c mitches i, I look you just gotta if you're gonna play the best players in the game you gotta take them out early don't drag it into the late game i think that's just an instant loss on their side i i most certainly agree you know say one of the biggest things so so what they run c mitch and udpu they run a jackrabbit in sentinel opener right so if i were to counter that what i would do the first thing i would do is either double jackrabbit or jackrabbit marine and that is the most important thing that i think we can implement because marines will absolutely melt sentinels if in in a good enough number but of course on the flip side sentinels have such a fast movement speed still and they are so good at evading all kinds of combat especially in the hands of a player like udpu so experienced already in the halo wars 2 infancy and doing such a great job executing these strategies i honestly do not know what they could do to pull out ahead that is of the BSGS squad. I'm not sure what they could do to pull out ahead of Andrew's Toxic. I'm not 100% positive of one certain strategy that would pull them ahead. So that is really what this strat this this game this series is all about is can they pull out and take down the Goliath Behemoth squadron that is Andrew's Toxic from C Mitch and Udpu. If they can take look, here's the most important thing. They've got to take a game early on. They can't let this go to two nothing. Uh, by the way, this is a best of five series so That's right. we're gonna see at least three games in this but look they've got to take an early game they got to take game one they've got to take game two if it goes to 2-0 i think andrew is toxic is too good of a team to to get reverse swept if an early game's taken maybe see mitch and updo have a little confidence shake I, these it's gonna have to be mentally i think because i think i think see mitch and i think updo have certainly the skills they are undefeated across regular gameplay across tournament gameplay they are still undefeated so what it's going to take is a mental uh, a bit of a mental breakdown on their side so insane and natronics they've got to probe them they've got to start poking the beast and frustrating them that's how you're going to take out the goliath that is andrew is toxic Absolutely. You know, we saw in the first series of the semifinals, we saw one thing in particular. I'm going to build off what you were saying. We saw a Shipmaster Jump Pack Brute Play actually take down the main base of Udpu. Now that right there was absolutely insane. And I think the reason it was successful is because they caught them so off guard. Just as Nick was saying, mentally you have to be in check for these games. And that if they just barely throw off the, like I said, the behemoth team that is Andrew's Toxic, if they throw them off just a tiny little bit, then I bet you they can take a couple games off of them. And Pat, I think without further ado, let's, let's just hop into this. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Slick and I am your host and caster for this tournament. Tagged along with my buddy Nick from Breaking the Clutch, and today we have reached the finals of our Halo Wars 2 2v2 Open Tournament. We have the best players in the world playing in this 2v2 tournament, and these are going to be some incredible games. Now, on the red side, we are starting with the player, Insane, who's running Kinsano Jackrabbits off the start. Also from the orange side, Natronics running Jackrabbits as well. This team is opening off with a very aggressive build. What about the blue side, Nick? On the blue side, we have Andrew is Toxic containing the one and only C. Mitch and Udpu. Oh boy, we're in for a treat here, Pat. Oh man, I am, I am nervous. Insane right here, the yellow player. He is number four on the global leaderboards for Halo Wars 2 2v2s. And his partner, Natronics, both of them running the new Kinsano DLC leader is number 11 and nick what about your side who do we have okay. for these players i don't have any slumps over here c mitch number one in the world in 2v2s 
and he couldn't have done it without his boy Udpu, number three in the world. And Pat, right away off the beginning, Udpu's gone for the early expansion. Oh, They've got boy. Marines in front, and it looks like guarding it almost. Oh, no, those are my Marines, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going, we're cool. No, keep that, yeah, we're, here we go. He's got... <laughs> He's collecting resources in front of my dead base. Also, a quick expansion on the backside for Seamage. So instead of opting to go for a uh, main base, he decides to get the side expansion. Now, Nick, I actually very interesting play here from this team. They have decided the red side has decided to go the far left and right sides of the map to expand for mini bases. I think their one goal is to protect their Jackrabbit pump as best they can. They are also buying, Nick, or Insane is buying a second mini base expo here. So he's going to be triple pumping Jackrabbits off the start. Absolutely crazy plays already. The cheese is real, Nick. What's it looking like over there now? So nothing's changed too much. They're just building up on that expansion. I can't really tell what C Mitch is going at this moment. Uh, I'll update you on that when we get a chance. But, Pat, just to preface, these two teams have already met each other, right? Absolutely. So they kind of know each other's strategies a little bit. They played in pool play, and they've met back in the grand finals. But real quick on Seamich, he's going, he's opting for the Jackrabbit Rush. He's getting support drone right now. He's five seconds away from that. Interestingly enough, still for the uh, for Natronics, he's just now gotten grenade launcher, mini frag launcher for the Jackrabbits. So he's a little far behind, you know, opting to expand with the mini base so far away. But I feel like with both Jackrabbit rushes co coinciding together, they're scouting the extra expansions, trying to find Udpu's Expo. They know it's coming. So they're just looking all over the map for it. I think, Nick, they are about to walk right into it here in the front door. Let's Pat, find look out. look at this. We finally, he has scouted out the base. We haven't seen that in any gameplays up to this point. We're finally seeing someone scout. Green is now well aware that Orange is going Jackrabbits, and they will compensate accordingly for that. Absolutely. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh, good garrison play there, just making sure the Jackrabbit doesn't get an easy kill. They are looking got everywhere out. for this expo, making sure that Udpu hasn't gone somewhere too far. Oh my, look at that. The upgraded redline Jackrabbits from Seamitch are going to be a very hard... A very hard match for the double Jackrabbit play. You know, what's really weird is that the red team has not assembled all of their Jackrabbits into one spot to help. Right now, we've got C. Mitch playing a little conservative, playing back towards his base, and it looks like he just wants to pick off Orange, I believe that is, and make sure that he doesn't get too comfortable on this side oh, of the map. Oh, dropping the turret there on the expo. I think, Nick, we might see a very aggressive play. C. Mitch knows that. Oh my god, he's got a lot of Jackrabbits already. Opting for that proxy mini base expo might not be the best option for them right now. With such an aggressive team on the other side. Oh no, so many Jackrabbits are falling, Nick. They've got the base to three-fourths health. Now, the problem is that they've got Sentinels, and they're not able Look to really that. take those out that well. The absolute you need Marines range. for the Sentinels. They, I think right here with the red team, did they did a very risky play early on. Good idea to pull back. Keep going. No, 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 no. Don't get more aggressive. You gotta with the heal up. That's a bad you gotta idea. heal up. Oh, no. oh he so just lost Jack three, Rabbids, four, four, five, five six, Jack seven. Jesus, oh my goodness. Man. So many. He, they did Rabbids so well. Pull. Eight now. Uh, oh look, my god. They're running. They are that in was, a terrible They did spot. so well up to that point. You gotta know when to back up. That right there. You know, I. I think the, the double Seamage aggression... is getting aggressive on this side. Yeah, I figured as much. The double aggression from the red team just wasn't strong enough. I don't know what they're going to do. They're trying to drop a turret down. So that, but Seamage has Might so many redlining rabbits, Might be too little too late. Rabbits, He's man. redlining across. Oh, my God. Look, Already in Halo Wars 2, you cannot overcommit. It is so crucial not to do that. And here we go. Let's see if Seamage takes his takes my advice here. Look how many Sentinels, Sentinels are, are getting in. aggressive right on the main. They're punishing them every second oh of this game. Oh my goodness, for that this game might massacre. already be over. Look, Sentinels are still viable after the patch. Look at this up to or up here first. proving it, man. Oh my god. Absolutely ridiculous. This base is going to melt even with the nerfs of the Sentinels. Absolutely incredible Sentinels game. Sentinels are backing up though. So and notice this. Right now, Seamage is able to hold off this base by himself. So the Sentinels are going to go occupy another part of the map. Well, now he's going to go back and try to take out the <laughs> yellow units. To but, out what to do, yeah. but do you see how he's utilizing the comfort of this attack right now to let the Sentinels roam around a little bit? Then they don't have to attack the same thing, especially with the Sentinels, because they move so quickly. They're able to move around the map. He doesn't have to be on top of them at all points. Only when they're attacking. 
Absolutely, and it's such such great plays coming out. Like they knew, like Seamich scouted and saw the double jackrabbit play coming, so he pulled all of his jackrabbits right to Udpu's expansion, expecting that play to coming, like to come right into his base. And he did a great job. Seamich and Udpu working together with both their units stacked up, proving why they are such great players. And oh, why that's a good drop right there, the napalm strike, and Seamich is still driving into it, quickly evading. Not staying in there too long. Look how many super sentinels, or sorry, sentinels it takes to get them out of the garrison. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're why the sentinels are engaging that instead of the main. Because the marines are very good against. If he gets RPG marines, they're very good against sentinels. I don't think one marine's gonna do it, but <laughs> they're just playing safe. And I, I think this one's wrapped up right now. Does yellow so have an well. expansion anywhere? Absolutely not. He's got a mini base on the side, but orange is not expanded. I think that these guys, Insane and Natronics, have accepted defeat at this point. So many Sentinels, they're going to try to get fancy. Oh, dropped a bunch of Sentinels there with that Napalm strike. Fairly impressive, but at the same time... Oh, and the turret. If he just focuses that turret with all those Sentinels, man, it, that thing's going to drop so fast. I think it's just too little too late. I think and so as well. Such great reverse reads. reverse counter. Absolutely. You know, they just sat... Like, you, like we always preach, Jackrabbits are so great going around the map. These two just proved to us that Jackrabbits are great for defensive plays as well as containment and rush plays. Absolutely point. incredible point. Like, the, both of these players cheesed early game, and they are getting punished for it, like I said, as of right now, from the incredible teamwork and conservative plays from Udpu and Seamich. Now, Pat, we saw, we saw Insane earlier overcommit on Udpu's expansion. They got it down to a quarter health. I'm looking at it right now. They haven't healed it. What could have gone differently? We said maybe they back up, reheal, and then reshift, right? Maybe they swing the hammer, go across the map, and attack somewhere else. Instead, they opted to get a little greedy, and they tried to take out that weak base, and obviously it cost them the game. So how do they improve differently going into game number two? They have to be ready for the Sentinel play, and they also have to be ready for a good defense. I think I don't think I'd go for a double jackrabbit cheese against these guys. They're the best in the game for that very reason. You know, what we're going to have to do, you have to think about how do I counter the Sentinels? Maybe you use your Jackrabbits to defend your mains, throw up turrets, and you might have a better chance instead of doing an all-in committal play. Look at all the Wolverines coming out here for Natronics. Oh my god, he's got about five Wolverines, but that's not going to do much. You should have had that way earlier. Look, the Jackrabbits are going to engage. Watch how fast Wolverines will drop to Jackrabbits. Absolutely crazy plays. What they need to do next time, Nick, is be prepared for the Sentinels. The Sentinels are going to be... The end all be all for C. Mitch's team. Udpu is great with those units. He knows how to get them up the quickest in the game. And he knows how to implement them properly in combat. There's not much you can do unless you take out those Sentinels. Absolutely. And has is, has Yellow been eliminated yet? I believe so. I don't see anything else on the map. So he is officially out of the game. Okay. We've got Warthogs coming out. We've got we've got Wolverines coming out. And I they refuse to it. give up. You gotta love that. And you can see right now. See Mitch and Uppu, they're just being conservative. They're bringing forward the Kodiaks. This is just relentless. They are not going to stop with their strategy <laughs> just because there's only one player left. They're going to just keep going. And here we go. <laughs> here comes the kill shot, if you will. Doesn't matter if you got four turrets and four Wolverines. Oh, it needs a few Kodiaks. Look at that. The Sentinels are fully upgraded. Oh. Look how fast they just yep. drop. Wolverines are too weak. Kodiaks and Siege units are shredding them from afar. Incredible play. So many Kodiaks in the Fog of War. Their range is ridiculous. And that's, that's going to be game right there. Game number wow, one. Great game one. Goes to Andrew's Toxic. We've lost this one, but there will be plenty of other chances. Now, Nick, before we exit, I just want to take a quick look at these stats really quick. Absolutely. Exactly that. Udpu always proving to us why he's on top. Look at the supplies generated. He only generated 2,400 power because he knew that he was about to take the game. He was so confident with his Sentinel play. He, I don't think he needed to go anything else. Uh, in terms of units built, 28, I guarantee that's mostly Jackrabbits for Seamich, and 27 units destroyed for Udpu. Udpu put the team on his back and brought the game in after Mitch defended their base. Absolutely incredible plays from both sides. Let's see what happens in game two. And we're back with game number two. Can good shit Bucksnork turn this around, Pat? Is it possible? Or is this one just out of their reach? I believe that it's truly possible. You know, at this point in the game, there is a lot going on in terms of, say, what the, what the best strategy is. How do I counter it? What's the best possible play, right? And I think exactly that. I think that if anybody else in this game could figure it out, 
that it would be GSBS. I think they are the, the, the chance to counter the behemoth that is Andrew is toxic. We have a oh here we go. Udpoo's picking up his expansion already, and it's kind of far away from his from his main. But they're putting it in a triangle formation, so possibly they could each get units out quickly enough to it if needed to be defended. Oh, but the expansion my. pat is far enough away that they could possibly they could possibly take it out early. The red team that is. Well, let me just blow your mind very quickly. We have just like I said, creative gameplay coming out of GSBS. Natronics has just expanded towards the middle of the map, and so oh. has Insane. We have a double, oh, okay. double, double expansion against some of these two players who are known for Jackrabbit rushing. Oh, man. This could be a quick game if not executed properly. We will have to see what GSBS decides to do. It could go either way, Nick. You never know from these players. The best in the game always have tricks up their sleeve. And like we were saying, Nick, mentality is everything. If they throw them off enough, they might get a good advantage on the Andrew is to Andrew's toxic team. What do we got? I mean, it is what they needed. It's That's what they need to absolutely. do. But again, if they if they do anything wrong in any sense, it's so it's over before it even began. I mean, that could <laughs> seal their fate or it could win them the game. I, I like the bold play here in the grand finals game number two. Absolutely, and this is this is what we this is what Halo Wars Two is all about, man. Just completely throwing off your opponent, outsmarting them every step of the way. Now let's see if this this strategy could potentially work. I'd love to see what Insane is going to do with his expo. It looks like I see similar builds coming out of both bases. They might be opting in for a quick tech two, and then into some kind of stronger unit to potentially put up. Maybe more Wolverines, maybe something to deal with those Jackrabbits. A Cyclops and Wolverine combo early enough in the game could truly, totally thwart the entire play of Andrew's Toxic. Now very quickly, we've got Seamich going Marines. Interesting oh. play, he opted for Marines instead of of jackrabbits why is this perhaps they want to utilize garrisons on the map there are plenty around I, i'm not sure it's a risky play just because how big the map is but uh, oh, maybe i mean they've got tricks up their own sleeve i guess as well i don't advise it yep they're picking up the garrisons that's what they're doing with them uh-huh and another thing as well so they Natronics, have just scouted out orange's base by exactly. the way exactly natronic spots the jackrabbit and notices that it doesn't have many frag launcher or support drones so that means to him if i'm that player i say wait a second He's not upgrading his, his jackrabbits? What does that mean? Oh, oh here we go. Yellow's sentinel got sentinels. Play out of insane. They're giving it back to him. Could it be a double sentinel push? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure this out what would be it. an it's epic a double play. sentinel play. Potentially the only thing. Marines cannot outspeed sentinels. They are so slow. This could be something that they needed. They might have... Dude, they pulled deep into their pocket and found the craziest strategy they could possibly come up with, and they are implementing it live in front oh, of look, us. Look, C. Mitch is already putting turrets on his base. He does not like what he just saw over there. <laughs> he's going to put some turrets up. It's time to defend this. And he's got Marines stacking on Udpu's oh, no. secondary base right now. Uh, they are keeping unit very close to that secondary base. And oh, right now, my. Sentinels are pushing towards the center on my side. This is crazy. So... So what we've done so far, Red Team has pushed up and found the extra base that you left behind, Nick. And they're checking all the mini bases on the side. They want to see what's going on. I think they see the Marine from from C. Mitch here. And what we're seeing is a lot of Sentinels all around the map. I'm hearing beams going everywhere. Oh, so many Marines with Red Line. That could be so dangerous to this play if executed improperly. So many Sentinels for the Red Team, Nick. I'm counting at least 14 Sentinels right now total from Combined? both Combined? Are they both going Sentinels? They are doubling. They're, they're, they're oh, double Sentinel rushing. Oh, man. <laughs> it's such a bold play. They've got to execute it so quickly, though. But look, Mitch is pushing up. He doesn't care about what you have to say. He's oh, going no. all Marines on the other side of the base. Now, or on the other side of the map, I see Yellow's pushing up on the other side. If they can get a flank on this with their Sentinels, this game's done. Nick, they are collecting. Orange and Yellow are double pushing oh, Sentinels. Oh, there they go. Onto his base Green right is now. right there. They're about to run into green. That's crazy. He knows he can't defend that. I can't believe he's going to pull back and Red's try Red's got to back it up. Okay, there they go. They met we together. We need to double engage. They've got a team. They've got a team. They're not oh, teaming. No. There they go. There they go. Oh, nice. You need to focus fire. Every single unit here matters. The Marines from the oh, are coming goodness. back. So many Sentinel engagements happening right now. They have found Unpu's extra base in the process. Marines Could are it chasing be? it. They know if they lose this engagement that their strategy will finally be taken down.
And see, Mitch isn't doing anything with his Marines right now. He's got to, he's, I guess he's pushing some back and he's pushing some towards the expansion. He's, he doesn't know what to do with his Marines right there now. There are too many Sentinels They're too slow. for the red team. Wait, is Such Uppu backing up? Is Uppu backing them up? He is pushing single-handedly, defeating a double Sentinel push by Are you himself. kidding? And now Seamich is confident. He is pushing up to insane secondary. Pat, what went wrong there for, for the Red Team Sentinel push? I think it was just focus firing, and the few Marines that Seamich left behind were just enough to engage. Seamich somehow foresaw the future in a Magic Crystal Ball and knew they were going to go a double Sentinel play and went ex the exact counter. This is why this man is undefeated in a 2v2 ladder since the past came out oh man so the, much it, look at this red is losing all of his super every sentinels single, look at the focus firing chaining every single incredible week you put him on a two on one against sentinels oh and he came out victorious God. losing barely any i have no idea how he just did that that was absolutely incredible nick it all comes down to those little engagements look how safe he constantly plays he's like okay i'm just gonna back up a little bit and then i'm gonna push right into natronics you know, they're always evaluating the situation they're not how just gonna mindlessly move? push up which cost many people the game. This is incredible. I have never Seamage seen it. Seamage is like pushing this. to yellow right now. Oh, with the arc defense, okay. but he could just fly away. What are you doing? This is this is the craziest engagement I've ever seen. What a bold play coming out of game two here. Already RPGs wow. for Seamich's straight up grenade marines. Not really worried. Look how fast he will melt all oh look, it's, the RPGs are just going to rinse yeah. every single sentinel. As That's he exactly why you do that. Everything. Absolutely incredible. As long as you have plays. RPG, Sentinels don't mean a damn. <laughs> That's so insane. I cannot believe Unpu just defended that play. That, that is, might be it, that's the, crazy. That might be the play of the entire tournament, Pat. I would say so as well. That is gonna get a special feature on the channel for certain. Unpu pushing up with every single Sentinel. What? Look at the focus yeah, they fire. Sacked he is it. so they good sacked at the that. Bases. This is this. over. We Every are going to game number three. Dropping. That is so crazy. Andrew is toxic. Up oh, two nothing. Pat, can they complete the tournament nine and zero and end it? I, as I honestly think they could after this match. I am so baffled by what just I happened. I think this is demoralizing. I, this I think. is crazy, man. Udpu proving everyone he is the Sentinel King. He's, three four three. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. It's Udpu the best in the game. I, I think he might, like, see, Mitch, I get you what you're number one, man, but come on. Like, that was an incredible play out of Udpu. I think we've been shedding too much light on see, Mitch. Udpu, MVP, <laughs> Udpu, MVP. <laughs> thus far proving that. Oh, my God. What an incredible game from both of these, like, all of these players. Trying to pull out the, the magic rabbit out of the hat and just didn't work. It just absolutely backfired on them. Udpu just... 343 says to Udpu, we're nerfing the Sentinels because of you, and Udpu says, good luck, you can't nerf me, and he comes back and just dominates two entire forces, two entire armies running the exact same build as him. He's now got, he's, I'm sure he's going to upgrade the Sentinels soon, drops in a turret to take out those Marines, and that is game two in the bag for Andrew's Toxic. Ladies and gentlemen, we have worked our entire way throughout this day. I have lost my vocal cords throughout the battle. We have made it to the final potential match. All Andrew's Toxic has to do is take this game over GSBS and they have won the Halo Wars 2 2v2 Open Breaking the Clutch Tournament. On the red side, we have ourselves Insane and Natronics for Team GSBS. And of course, on the blue side, you already know. We have Andrew is toxic. I'm going to go with the MVP of the tournament, Udpu, and then we've got Seamich on the other side. Seamich immediately pat going Jackrabbit, and Udpu opting, it looks like, for that secondary base again. Looks like that's his staple strategy every time. He loves to do that. Natronics 
and uh, Insane are just kind of, I think they're doing like, they're almost baffled. They haven't made a single unit yet. They're just throwing down generator first, upgrading the generators and going into supply pads. It looks like they're trying to tech up to stay in for the long run. Both running Kinsano once again, they are going to try as hard as they possibly can to bring this game into a game four, Nick. What do you think about it? What, what's coming okay, up? So an- initially I stated if Andrew is toxic, was put into the late game, they would win. Maybe that's the only strategy that uh, that the red team can implement now. Maybe they have to take Seamich and Udpu into the late game in order to win, because it seems like in the early game, these guys are unstoppable. We just saw last game a two-on-one sentinel battle, and Udpu didn't lose anything. I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to evaluate uh, this team right now. You know, I totally know what you mean, Nick. And you want, like... I, I think that Natronics and Insane are just kind of confused. I don't think they really know. Like, I would be so baffled. Like, we're down 3-0 to this new strat, this new meta. How the hell do you stop this? And right now, we're seeing they went generator first, upgraded it, threw a second generator down. Both of them upgrading their second generators. They are just going all out. I have no idea what the strategy could look like. Not a single unit produced. But I will tell you something, Nick. I know C. Mitch is Jackrabbits, and I know for a fact that he could most certainly take out the game early on if they don't get any defense up. So right away, C. Mitch has opted not to produce Jackrabbits, yet he's upgraded them to dro- support drone, and he's also got two side expansions. So he saved that money instead of going early Jackrabbits. Again, that conservative play, and it's going to pay off greatly when he starts triple pumping support drones. That's, that's crazy. And we're seeing a turret right away for Insane going down, a turret right away for Natronics, preparing themselves for that Jackrabbit play. You know, Nick, one thing that's very important is if they don't have any units to defend those Sentinels, man, they just have an opportunity to wreak absolute havoc. Oh my god, we have a quick base upgrade coming down for Insane and Natronics. They're both going for a quick base upgrade, Nick. With tech Could they two, possibly they go in Wolverines? Potentially. Is that they what they're possibly doing? I don't know. I, if I were them, I would try to opt for Cyclops Wolverine as quickly as possible, but I just think there are going to be too many Jackrabbits. At fr- they're going to have to guess. The C. Mitch would have to guess which player would go which. And if he guesses correctly, then he could most certainly take down the Barracks before Cyclops start rolling out. The timing attack is just is just too good for Seamich. Right now, we've got Sentinels pushing the far right side. Uh, it looks like Udpu's trying to capture some power. Oh, we've got... He saw him in the center. He's got yellow Marines in the center. We've got a yellow Marine. Okay, so they're doing some scouting right now on red side. Absolutely. Uh, anything could really happen in this game. I like that they're constantly switching up their strategy. Uh, red team, that is. And they're not giving up. You know what, Nick? And our guess was 100% correct. It looks like Insane is going for a quick barracks while Natronics is going for a quick garage play. So we could see a Cyclops Wolverine counter potentially. I don't know if it's They've possible. They've got to do it quick. There's so They've many units. They've got to go quickly. I see. Okay. <laughs> Insane is opting in for both a barracks and a garage on his base. And then Natronics is going for a double garage. I think we're about to see. They know that those, that those Sentinels are too prominent and too strong. They need to have more anti-air. We already have. Oh, Insane is running double barracks garage. So he's actually double pumping cyclops this dude is crazy oh my goodness i mean these are the bold plays you need if you're going to take down the number one team in the world pat exactly that and see mitch is moving out with two jack rabbits just kind of scouting around i'm seeing that that's a very wise play if i was see mitch i would just push up i would pick one whoever has the barracks i'd have to engage first or i'd at least have to wait for udpu to make some sentinels we'd fly in together but keep in mind whichever one they attack first is going to be the opposite one who gets to build even more. So we'll see what happens. This just in. Okay, look. <laughs> they have switched. Seamich has switched. He saw that they were going Cyclops. He's going double pumping, triple pumping Marines right now. What? He's made the swap already. <laughs> That's insane. How is this possible? He, just, he, he already, that? he took his Jackrabbits. He upgraded him to Scout. Uh, yeah, and then he saw it and then made the switch. He didn't hesitate. He switched. He's backing up and he's regrouping all of his units. I mean, this is the kind of conservative play that is so needed in this game. Absolutely, and you know, at the same time, man, Insane is opting in for Flame Warthogs and Cyclops at the same time. If I were him, I'd continue to do that. Yeah, that's a great counter, and at the same time, he's prepped himself for high power units being Cyclops, so he's getting ready. He could probably run snipers if need be, if he scouts in time. The only problem is, I believe, is that the red team hasn't scouted, but they're already pushing out. We got, they got about 
They got about five Cyclops, two Warthogs, and about one, two, three, four Wolverines. One's coming out right now. There's a good amount of units here. Uh, yeah, there's a good army size to take on those two strategies from C. Mitch and Udpu. Now, Pat, oh my goodness. The, the strategies don't ever stop. <laughs> Udpu stopped going Sentinels. Are you serious? He's got two garages going on right now. Are you serious? He, what is happening? They have foreseen. They know what's going on. How in the they world opted, did... They've opted to change strategy. Reverse psychology. In the middle of the game, they both switched strategy. Oh my god, Nick, I want to tell you, I would never, ever, ever, even my life, like, counted on it, would play Rock, Paper, Scissors against Udpu or Seamich. These guys just think 12 steps ahead, and they are ready to counter. This is why they are first and third in the game in 2v2s. They know how to run this stuff into the ground for the enemy team. It is insane what we're seeing. Speaking of insane, we got a lot of Cyclops and Wolverines pushing right up to, to a main base of the blue side. And they're going to go collectively. I think they're going to push together. This could be an interesting engagement, Nick. How many units does the blue team have? Okay, so it looks like uh, C. Mitch just upgraded Redline to the second power, right? So now he's got permanently, well, it looks like fast-moving Marines. And then... Uh, we've got garages going on. I, I can't tell exactly what he's producing. Kodiak. So okay, angry. there's the Kodiak play on uh, on Udpu's part. Oh, but here we go. They have just noticed the is massive the red army who's pushing up the Sea Mitch's Expo. This is it. So many Marines are coming out. Gotta put those Wolverines up front. Don't oh, let the, the Cyclops wolves. die to a man. Oh, great. Good drop. Good strike drop. There. Absolutely crucial. Dude, this, the Kodiaks are just laying fire down. On the enemy team, there so and many so units. They're so vulnerable, though. That's it. There they go. They're getting hurt. And now comes They've the They've got to drop turrets play. in between. The Sentinel play is coming out from them. Look at that. Every single siege round that hits the ground is oh, popping out oh two Oh, my Sentinel. goodness. Is this how you counter it? Oh, my God. So many Kodiaks are dropping. He dropped all the Kodiaks. One shot. He dropped them all. Every single Kodiak is down. Arc defense coming in. From Blue's Udpu down to, getting nervous. Blue's down to like six or seven units. What an impressive trade. Push that teal expo. And the wolves are taking out. out Oh my god, four turrets already up in the expo. Udpu is foreseeing This that. is it. So many Wolverines right here in Flame This is it. This is all they have. They're trying to still produce Kodiaks in the back. Oh but my god, they're they pushing push to right the now, main. This could be it. No, but you need to come together. No, they're splitting they're up their attacking units. attacking separately. But the Cyclops and how, can take out those Kodiaks. Look at how hurt they're getting. Oh, they realize no. that now. Could this no, little you play cost them the that game? Expo. No, they still, keep in mind, Nick, the red team has not double expanded yet. They are still one base playing right now. Both Udpu and Mitch have had double bases since the start of the game. And they're realizing that now with those double turrets in the back of Udpu's base, man, a couple Kodiaks could just destroy the Cyclops army, especially with those Sentinel supports. There goes that They've shot. They've also got quad turret on all their bases as well, except, oh, no. uh, I'm sorry, Seamich does not, but he has two turrets. They're going to try to utilize this turret. Look at where he's placing these the Kodiaks. The Kodiaks, the Sentinels, everything is getting rinsed. You guys have, have thought double They're both base. going Kodiaks now. That is insane. I cannot believe that they just held off that strategy, man. Those Sentinels are so strong. The Wolves and the Cyclops had to stay together in that engagement, and they split up. They had an opportunity to completely decimate that entire base. They took the base, they're backing up, but Udpu still is running double base, and I guarantee you he's prepared for whatever they have next. How do they possibly stay so calm when changing this up? I mean, they, they changed the strategy mid-game, it doesn't pay off, they're hurting, a little misclick on red side, and then they somehow still pull it off. That's they had so no crazy. units. They had like six Marines left, Pat, and they were all weak. I'm looking at them right now. And somehow, <laughs> some way, he stopped them. Yeah, it, that's that's just it right there. C. Mitch has been a Halo Wars player and one of the best in the game since the old Halo Wars, at least for a couple years now. He continues to prove himself in Halo Wars 2. Look at the Kodiak setup on the ridge, man. Is this Blitz? Because they have such a good layout. Looks like we're finally going Tech 3 for the red team. We're definitely going to have some interesting plays. We've got a stalemate for a little bit. It's going to be interesting, Nick. It I might be into the long haul. Buckle it, it, down. It could be, but just okay. You know, this is game three. If, if they win this game, if blue team takes the W here, they will win this tournament and take home the 80 bones. Oh, Kodiak's a little out of place there. You need we to go. engage We've got it. red pushing up. Red's going to try to pick him off. Oh, but again, the it's the Sentinels are so, so strong. So many siege units. Oh, no. He, he pushed out too far. He's trying to ram, and the ram's Every not even working. Every single unit is one oh, shot. Oh, this is demoralizing. They've got to run back. They're oh, not pushing no. together, Pat. This is the problem. So many and They don't have the hugs. proper counter units. 
No, they simply don't. What is what he trying to do with these? Where he's just pushing going? up into. Oh, no, oh god! They don't realize that he's got everything. Kodiaks all around the map. Such an intense battle. They're making sure that oh, well, both red players have expanded during this time, forcing C Mitch and Udpu to stay back, which I think is a very good play. I think that's a very smart move. Losing all those units, maybe not. But, you know, say heckling them from the side of their expo, making sure that they're still double-based and that one of the players from the blue side is not, is very crucial at this point in the game. So many one-shot flame hogs, one one-shot wolverine. I don't know why they're going to push this spot. Exactly that. See, exact, see Mitch is so I, they've, good. They've got to be trying that. to just get rid of units right now. What are they producing back at their base? Well, right now, back on the yellow side, I see a big blob of units here. It looks like a bunch of flame warthogs, cyclops. Just like he was doing yellow in the first place. And Natronix has locked his base. He's going air pad. Twice, two air pads going on right now. And uh, he's pretty much just ready to go into that air swap thing. He's definitely this is too little too late. Too. Right now, would you believe it? C Mitch is going Wolverines. Oh my god. <laughs> The best it's of like the game. they they so what they do is they they attack they kill them and they say okay what units do they need to counter our units let's make the counter to that unit they exactly are just that. two steps ahead at all times it's incredible and look at this even even the marines going out across from C Mitch and taking all of the power nodes the one shot warthog going out for the scouting unit just to make sure that he's still oh no he's gonna catch these hornets flying over I think. Oh no, he sees yep. the Hornets, And now it's they're official, guaranteed. he knows exactly what they're going. That's so unfortunate, the drive-by scout for C Mitch, just using his genie ball, just walks right in and sees exactly what's going on. I just said and genie Pat, ball, it's a genie lamp, what the hell's wrong with me, man? You've it's gotta crazy. see this setup in the center. Right I now, to, man. It's we've, crazy. we've got Teal oh with God. two, four, six, eight, eight Kodiaks set up along the center, locked in, and they're just gonna start attacking. It's like a, an alarm almost. They It just starts launching any time that they see units in the distance. And this is crucial, it gives them a second. It puts the, uh, the fight way in front of their bases. It gives them a second to rebuild units in the background. This is such an amazing play. It's like a real war strategy right now. Absolutely, man. And it looks like uh, looks like they're struggling a little bit eco-wise on the red side. It looks like they're starting to sack garages, throw up some more supply pads, make sure their income's good so they can maintain a double pump of Hornets. Are they still on one base? Air pads. Nope. They, they have double base successfully. And of course, you know, the pressure on the blue side of the map has been good. But what am I seeing right now? I'm seeing a bunch of one-shot Marines. Looks like Mitch just needs a little bit extra supply or... Nope, looking for the scout, trying to get a couple Pat, things The Kodiaks over. right now are leapfrogging. Oh, they oh, just got caught. Oh, the perfect timing! But look, the other ones in the background are there to help. And the wolves are right there with the Kodiaks. It's a brilliant setup. Oh, oh but the Inferno! That could be crucial. That's a great play. Oh, and what the is going on? That's it, man. GSPS is not out of this game yet. Trying they to hold on to the aggression. Up. That is what I'm talking about. They knew that was going to happen. Throwing down the turret in the Inferno flame. Not sure about that. Kill that Look last how quickly Seamich backs up his units. He's taking his wolves back, and now he's... By the way, they've already re-swapped to Super Sentinels. That is insane. Are you serious? I'm not lying. They have switched again. Oh they are my. just not sticking. And this is such an important strategy for everyone who plays this game. You have to adjust and adapt to the surroundings and the gameplay. That and it looks crazy. like he's just going to sacrifice these Marines and get more units out from a different... Uh, he's going to get different units out. Yeah, but not without getting a couple of units in the trade-off. One Cyclops goes down. If he could get any nades off, I think he already used them. He almost picked up a second Warthog there. Now, Nick, just like you're saying, you know, what Insane needs to do, what Natronics needs to do is expand as much as possible. Take this advantage while they're still tech swapping. They know that's a potential threat. Upgrading to Wingman is exactly what they did to the Hornets, so those might actually be a viable counter to Sentinels. Sentinels take a long time to upgrade all the way, Nicholas, especially when you're, you're pumping out as much as possible. And at the same time, Insane can just easily swap to Wolverines at the... Look, he's actually throwing an air pad up. He's producing air units as well. Now, I have no idea what's he, going on. He, this is here crazy. is the difference in this game. Right now, each of... We have Seamich and Udpu. They each have reserves to... Fully upgraded. They have, at the very least, 100, maybe even 120 units. I couldn't tell if they upgraded even further. And then they've Man. also got Advanced Logistics 2 being upgraded. They are now going to be able to produce more units more quickly. I just... The tech swaps, it's... It's so inevitable baffling, for them. So, so what they're crazy. doing is they're just setting themselves up so they can switch so quickly and they don't get caught up in it. 
I just, I just, I'm such a fan of them. Like, like the fact that they they build an entire army, just like you're saying, right? If I build an entire army of vehicles, well, the counter is going to be Cyclops because they're both UNSC. So I'm going to make a bunch of air units. Let's swap back to Sentinels while I still have my army of vehicles. It's so absolutely awe-inspiring how far ahead they are thinking in terms of strategy. What's next in the plays? And they, they brought themselves still at the same time, man. You know, uh, like they GSBS has brought themselves into this late game against the best players in the game it's absolutely incredible to me that they've stuck it out this long showing them showing all of, all of us sitting at home here just how incredible they are as halo wars 2 players how they're going to prep for this next attack is going to be the deciding factor they are all pushing up on the far your right side my left side uh, actually, the Sentinels have opted to stay back. I think those Blue Hogs are going to go figure out what's going on ahead before they, before the Sentinels push. And Man. by the way, he's got a Granddaddy Super Sentinel over there. I don't oh, know what it's called, no. but he's, he's got, got a it. Retriever Sentinel out? He has it. Oh, no. Look at how effective these units are. Are these... Are these Goss spitting <laughs> hogs right here? They are here? fully spitting upgraded fire? flame hogs from Kinsano. What that means, Nicholas? Look how they're damaging the base. Every single time they shoot, they spread a little bit of napalm on the ground. It's absolutely ridiculous how effective it is against all infantry and base units. There Send comes death. the arc defense as well. They're just putting it. Actually, that's that's not arc defense. That is the siege upgrade for Anders. And here comes C. Mitch, angry yeah. that you've made him wait this long, ready to push up to the base. But one thing in particular, there really aren't that many wolves. If they can focus fire the wolves with the hornets, that'd be very huge. Now, where do you think Udpu's units are right now? Udpu, I have no idea. I, I sitting him, I'd at push their the main base. base. He is waiting until the Wolverines push up to Blue's units before, oh before he engages. God. He wants to make sure that he's not going to lose all of his units. Oh my, an absolutely huge inferno there coming out of Natronics. Great pickup. So many hornets at this point. All those wolves are one shot. They could probably execute oh them. Oh my goodness, that is a Look lot of Look at the Wolverines. massive swarm of they, air they units. You, they double horned it? They double horned it, man. I oh told you they were an air pad. Every single it. wolf falls. There are 9 million hornets. 120 pop, 240 pop of basically just Was this the counter hornets. they needed? It's a full aerial I don't know. Assault. Every single wolf is dropping in this engagement. Where are They're the Sentinels? They're rallying back to the Sentinels. The Sentinels have not budged. Everyone is pushing back. They're going to utilize all four turrets, all the leader powers to engage us right here. Oh Who's going to win this battle? Massive oh boy, air engagement. Go. Laggy everything. Wolverines are staying alive. This is the game ending Yellow engagement. Yellow is backed up. So many one-shot Hornets. They're not engaging it. Good play from the red side. Just retreat, man. We cannot take all of that with that Retriever Sentinel there. What are they going to do with those oh units? Now they're... Mitch has opted to push up. They know they're weak. Wolverine oh sniping goodness, the one shots. It. Single-handedly selecting every one shot and picking it up. This is the and micro look, that gives another one like player. That. Oh. The Sentinels have, have pushed themselves right over Simich's units. Now here's the full push, Pat. Super Sentinels no, are not. on the move. Oh this my is god. It. So many wolves and yellow and orange split up their units right as Simich pushes up. He knows that he can totally engage Why the do they Sentinels insist coming on doing in. It? Why All they split of them are their dead. units? This is oh it. no, the napalm oh, won't matter. Inferno man. gets a great play. Inferno has dropped a lot so of units there. So many Sentinels, it doesn't matter. So Retriever Sentinel hit the Y button. Oh, the super misses. Oh, Thank God boy. for that dodge. But every single Hornet falls in that engagement. For Notice one how the Super second. Sentinels immediately back up, Pat. Absolutely. They are not ready to engage so that yet. crucial. There's a chance they could have predicted the Wolverine play. But look, Seamish is like, I'm not, I don't care, man. I have anti-air. I'm just going to push right up to the front door. So many hogs oh, in front of dropping on the base. He's angry. He is mad that it has taken 20 minutes to take his $80 home. Absolutely incredible place from They're not giving up yet. Look at this. They took sandals. out two units. Oh my god, there's so much going on. My Xbox is going to melt after this game. So much this craziness. What an epic fight here from Seamage and Unpu to take home the first ever championship from the BTC Halo Wars 2 2v2 Open. Such an incredible series from these guys, proving why they are number one and three in the world in 2v2s. Pat, there is so much to analyze after this game. Oh, my brain in, hurts, man. I'm in awe struck right now. What a fantastic game. And look, give it up to Insane. Give it up to Natronics. What a fantastic game that they put up. They put up amazing fights. But, I mean, 
yeah, let's just first tip our hats off to them. Fantastic Seriously. game. Wonderful uh, attempts overall. 20 minutes in. There's so much to, be, to learn from this gameplay from both sides. Uh, just fantastic. What a tournament. <sighs> See Mitch, Udpu, Andrew is toxic. 9-0. and Incredible. They finished the tournament completely undefeated, untouched, unfazed. There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this tournament series. We really hope you enjoyed it because we just wanted to show everyone how incredible competitive Halo Wars 2 can be. Let's see what happens after this. Wait for the next tournament announcement. It's going to be way more intense and way more action-packed, Nick, don't you think? Absolutely. It will only get better from here. Stay tuned. Uh, we've got, I'm going to tease it a little bit, two tournaments in the work. Be ready. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. It has been our honor for hosting this tournament. Uh, and thank you again so, so much. Thank you, everyone. We're going to take a look at the stats board. And then after this, we're going to close out. Please leave in the comment section below any feedback that you guys have. Do you wish that something was different with the way the style we did things? Do you think we should change anything? Please just let us know. Are we too annoying in the chat? That's okay. Let us know. All these things help for the next and future tournaments that we execute them properly. We're going to work for a higher prize pool next time. We're going to work for more players next time. So we hope you guys are excited for that coming as well. This has been Slick. And Nick, do you want to close out? Just... I, I don't know what to say. Thank you again. It has been our honor to host this tournament, and, uh, and we hope you guys stick around for future gameplays and tournaments as well. Thank Con you again. Congratulations to Andrew is Toxic. And Great also tournament. congratulations to Insane and Natronics. Fantastic game. They came in second place. And there you have it. Until next time, everybody, thank you for watching.